me again, that crazy guy with the lazy eye, and uh, well, Dennis said one, two, three, I'm on. I don't know what I'm on, but hey, I'm on a good time right now. We're over here, actually, at Saboba. Over here at the Saboba Paragliding uh, Park. Uh, it's actually not para parasailing. That's what you do behind boats. But hey, it's still in the air, folks. And uh, we're actually over here. I'm uh, with some good people that actually run the place, fly the place, and enjoy the place. So we got one of each person here with us today. And uh, this is Jeremy, right? Did I get your name yep. right? Man, I'm getting good at this, I swear. So Jeremy, I heard that you're taking over the place. What happened Yeah, there? that's true. What, what's going on that is changing new ownership? Uh, the original guy, Daryl Wood, is uh, wanting to retire. So he oh, asked man. if we could step in and kind of pass the torch and take it to the next level. So oh, that's okay. what we've been doing. Is. So we're going to have to have a grand opening, a re-grand opening. Yeah, for this we're place, hoping right? so. Yeah. All right. Well, so tell me a little bit about this uh, place and what happens out here. Uh, it's uh, it's been around for quite a while. They're they've been hang gliding here for over 30 years, and the access to that was from around the back through BLM land. There's actually a lot of acreage on top of the mountain that's really hard to get to. Right. But back in the day, the hang gliders they fought for it and. They carved a road out the top and started flying. Uh, they were determined to get in yeah, the air. Yeah, those guys, they? they don't mess around. Right. They were serious about their sport, and thank God they were there because the, most of the sites in America were actually developed by the hangies back in the 70s and 80s, which now the new paragliding with the nylon, we all have access to because of their hard work. So that, that's, that's kind of cool. neat. So that's how this started, just like pretty much every other site in America. And since then, the technology's evolved, and the gliders are getting better and lighter, and really just a small backpack. This is a full aircraft. You can hike up the mountain and fly off and land back at your car down here. Well, that's cool. We call it the uh, magic backpack. There you go. Yeah. And, uh, well, they call it the, uh, the inspector gadget thing. You yeah. Know? <laughs> so, but it, now, you kind of feel like 007, right? you know? 007 yeah. coming through. Now, what about uh, who all can benefit off of this paragliding park? I uh, noticed that uh, if you don't know how to paraglide, but you want to want to, uh, do you guys train out here? Yeah, we do have instructors on site that teach uh, daily, depending on the weather. You know, right. it's a tough sport, tough thing to be into because what mo Mother Nature tells you when you're going to fly and when you're not. You're not. Yeah. That's it. Now, so, how how does that work if somebody wants to learn how to paraglide? Well, it's uh, a solid. You want to commit three to four solid days when you start. Okay. Hands down, we yeah. Coming out a day here and a day there, it just you really need that foundation stuff to set in and the muscle memory to lock in. And it takes three to four days for most people to really start to get that going. And we start you on the uh, training hill back here, just kind of practicing launch techniques and flaring techniques and slowing it down. And then we, after you graduate from that, we move you over to the bunny slope, we call it. And you just kind of go up in increments as your skills progress and eventually you're higher and higher you know, launching from higher and higher altitude which gives you more and more time air time. Right. Now if somebody wants to learn how to paraglide. Okay, this is a brand new student. And my camera ran away from me. <laughs> now if somebody wants to learn how to paraglide, uh, that course, you know, I know it charges, you know, or it costs for the classes. How much sure. does it run if somebody wants to be interested in signing up? You want to budget at least four hundred dollars a day. Four hundred dollars a day. Okay. And about how many hours a day is that? Uh, we we do solid eight hours for sure, uh, depending on the weather, of course. Really. Right. Um, but they end up being pretty long days in the first few days. Gotcha. Yeah, you need to be able to hike and carry gear, and unfortunately, as you get better, it gets easier. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but your first day, you're sweating and yeah, working. You're gonna for lose it. a lot of weight that day. That's so. right. Yeah. So, 
Now, I know there's a lot of uh, nature things that you got to know, you know, working against the wind, with the wind, uh, different features of the paragliding. And I know we got a guy right here. Isn't that, what's your name again, bro? Mike. Mike. And Mike, uh, how long have you been uh, doing this? I've been paragliding for about a year and a half. About a year and a half. What yeah. got you into it? I was watching the paragliders out in New Zealand when I was working out there, and it looked like they were having so much more fun than I was. I'm an airplane pilot. Oh, okay. Uh, so when I saved enough money, I came out here and decided to learn how to fly and got super hooked on it. I was, I was living in North Dakota at the time, so I bought a paramotor to keep getting wing time. And uh, once my summer work season ended up there, I came back down here to keep flying. Now, I know uh, you were talking to my partner Dennis a little while ago about different ins and outs and stuff. Do you want to throw out some tips of different things that people should know about paragliding? And actually, Mike was talking about the three different kinds of um, devices that you come down on. So maybe he could start out by just uh, telling us what those are. He's thinking, folks. Yeah. <laughs> Mike's like that. Why don't we start with the speed, the, the fastest one? So, uh, speed flying is what you see when we're coming down the mountain. There's no or very little vertical gain once we leave our launch point. No air brakes. <laughs> and, and no attempt to gain altitude. It's all about losing the altitude in a control way. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's a little bit different sport, but the skills relate. It doesn't matter if you're trying to gain altitude or descend really fast. The same skills apply, which is fun. Right. It's like two different branches to the tree. And then you throw a PPG, a powered paraglider backpack, we call them butt fans, <laughs> and it's just a backpack with a big prop on it. And, and that allows you to fly on any flat terrain. You don't need the mountain access. Oh, that's cool. So that's why in North Dakota, that's where a lot of those guys will start. Right, because the they're all flat out there. Yeah. <laughs> so so what, the, Mike, what's the third one that we haven't talked about yet? Uh, paragliding? Yes. Uh, that typically happens later in the day when we get more lift off the mountain or from thermals. And that's where the goal of the flight is to stay up and ride ride the rising air to stay at altitude and accomplish whatever mission we want to accomplish by that flight. Uh, so gain lots of air yeah, time. Yeah, air time. Go. Okay, and uh, who's the gentleman, the third gentleman with us? Tell us a little bit about your experience up here. Uh, my name is Josh. I started, my first flight was in June of 2015. And I used to have a lot of other hobbies. And after my first flight, I was immediately addicted. Um, started selling all my other toys to buy more wings and spend more time doing this sport. That's so amazing. I think people have dreamed of human flight for as long as we've been here, and it's the most special thing I've done. I've done a lot of really fun things, and this one just takes the cake. Um, there's, it's such a wide range of what you can do with some nylon and strings. It's pretty amazing. It's like a tent with a bunch of strings and you take it out and set it up in the right way and somehow it flies. It's pretty, I've heard people say how do paragliders fly, and the good response is magic. <laughs> Thank you, Josh. Good way to put it right there. He took the words right out of my mouth. Okay, Eddie. <laughs> I'll toss it back to you here, buddy, to wrap it up here. Right. Well, uh, I don't have no wrapping paper, folks, so I'll just do it the best way I can. Now, I was just talking with you earlier uh, before we did this interview with you. Uh, I heard that we got something coming up this weekend. Can you tell yeah. me a little bit about that? Yeah, we're real excited about it. Uh, it's uh, Traditionally, we do it every year. It's called the Spring Boogie. Okay. Um, fly in. People come from all over the country. Get out of the winter snow of Colorado. He's in from Montana. So people come down here during March, during the bloom. All the flowers are out. It's just a perfect time of year. And this will be our 11th year doing it. Awesome. So we're real excited. We're now, have... what does all of it consist of? Oh, it's we're hoping to get some good food. So if you're a taco vendor or food vendor, you want to come out, Give we this need guy you. a holler. We need you out here. You know, let's have some good food and uh, enjoy some good uh, 
entertainment out here, you know? Absolutely, yeah. Now, when is this, uh, what time and dates and all this? Uh, technically, it's Friday and Saturday is what we advertise, but it's pretty much already started, and we're on Tuesday. People are coming. All right, out. we are. Got a good.